You have never heard or never experienced falling in love without experiencing a roller coaster of emotions. It's just that simple. And this is why people who show us only one phase, who are consistently one thing, tend to we tend to not fall in love with them. Because it is experiencing the ranges of people's personality, the ranges of different emotions that they actually experience and are willing to um, express verbally and non-verbally. It is through those ups and downs that we tend to come to a realization that we love them. We need to experience pain. We need to experience some fear. We need to experience hope. We need to experience doubt in order for their for the for the love that we have for them to be revealed inside of us. Our their psyche, their their energy needs to immune needs to get in touch with every form of emotion that we tend to experience. And one of the things that people will always tell them is that the moment they realize they love someone is when they're experiencing a, an up or down. It is those extremes, ups and downs, which usually happen because of behavior or maybe you guys had a confrontation, maybe you guys had a fight and then you you experienced a, a, a low like, oh my God, this fight, are we, make, are we gonna make it through? And then you guys finally reconciliate, right? Those roller coasters makes people realize that they love you. Like it's 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 the ups and downs and the willingness to deal with those ups and downs and not walk away and not and not exit that relationship makes you realize that you actually have loving feelings for them, right? And this is why um, people might have the potential to love you, but because you're so afraid to express certain things, you're so afraid to put them in an insecure state, you're so afraid to cancel a meetup, you're so afraid to. Ex you're so afraid to express that you're not happy with the way things are going that you never give them an actual range of emotions. You never give them that roller coaster. And, and, but, but then when we don't care or when we're losing interest, that's when we have the willingness to walk away. And so we do those confrontations. We have those tough talks. But then by then you don't even care about the person no more. And then you realize they love you now. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, you need to provide a, a roller coaster of emotions, and that's the purpose of this video. If you don't give people a roller coaster of emotions every now and then, you're pretty much boring to them. Um, it, it, anything that's interesting, anything that captures our attention, has its highs and lows. Anything, right? If you're in a movie, the great a great movie has a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Has moments of intense um, in, intense action and then moments of of no action in order to lull us to sleep, so that when the action comes, it catches us by surprise. All right, and when it comes to people, too many of us are too predictable. We are boring. We are attractive. You know, you might be attractive, but you offer no diversity in emotion. You're like rice, right? You only have one one flavor, and humans. Um, we we like a variety of emotions, just like with food. We like a variety of emotions, and we gravitate towards people who provide us that variety, even if it's negative. We gravitate towards them. It's it's to the point that generals, like for example Napoleon, was someone who who sent mixed signals to people. Where if somebody if somebody did good, he would instantly promote someone from the from the bottom to to general if they actually did something that's an act of bravery right for example napoleon um asked one of his generals who here has the most bravery and they he said the drummer he was like okay drummer now you're a general and he would do these like all of a sudden promotions so that everyone around them were like oh my god like this guy anybody can move up right that unexpected surprise where then all of a sudden he also came up to some people and said who were the most cowards, right? And then he at one time he had his troops and they fought in a very cowardly way. He was like, look, you guys do not deserve to be with us. You guys should just go home. And they were like, what? Go home. He's like, yeah, go home. I don't need you. Even though he had little troops, he said he only wants to fight with people who were willing to die for him. They were like, no, no, no. We won't die. We, we won't be cowards no more. We'll fight for you. We'll fight for you. Right? And they fought for him bravely after that. That the, the mix of harshness and just all of a sudden promoting people gives people a roller coaster of emotion because it's so high and it's also so low, right? These are the traits of great leaders, great partners, great people. 
People who know how to give people a roller coaster of emotion. People who know how to play the psychological game of keeping attention on them. This is something that if you master this, people are just going to gravitate towards you because you're interesting, right? So let's talk about this. One, the first thing is uncertainty and anticipation, right? That's the first fact. That's the first psychological fact that, that causes um, um, a roller coaster of emotion. Anticipation, the buildup of excitement and anticipation before an event or outcome can lead to a roller coaster of emotion as an individual oscillate between hope, fear, and excitement. And this is why it's, there is power in the hot and cold method where you are consistently hot for a period and then one day all of a sudden you're cold one day you disappear one day you act out of character one day you cancel that meetup one day you don't stay over when they when you usually stay over right this anticipation this fear this excitement creates a roller coaster of emotion so that's why for example um if somebody cancels a date for example last minute i wouldn't I, I, I won't be busy with i won't be available to them until like another week or so another two weeks and the reason why i do that is one because you know you, you can't be canceling on me last minute man that's just that's just disrespectful i can't just give you my time that quickly that's just me right the second thing is that if they actually like me them having to wait to see me creates a roller coaster of emotion and if they don't care if they don't like me that much they don't mind waiting but if they like me, the fact that they had to wait so long, when you meet them, you'll see it in their face. Their eyes literally, like, they glow. Their eyes are like, you're there because they had to wait for so long, right? If if you really want to test how somebody feels about you, notice how, they, notice how they greet you one time. Make them wait a long time to see you again and then greet them again and then notice the difference. If there's no difference in how they greet you, it means they didn't miss you, you know, like they weren't anticipating meeting you. But if you made them wait a long time and all of a sudden now they're meeting you and they give you a gift, they give you an extra hug, the hug is a little tighter, you'll notice that the anticipation had an effect on them where they were sad and now they're super happy to see you, right? So that's one thing, anticipation. Make people wait, man. You'll notice it. If you make somebody wait a text message longer than usual, you'll notice that their response is usually a little bit longer and usually more like more enthusiastic now we're gonna go to a quick commercial break to pay the bill all right ladies and gentlemen if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life your spiritual life honestly <laughs> um, your relationship life your family life your career life this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces. One is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15, 16. Holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle. He's a, he's a bad uncle. Get him. Shut up, Melissa. You should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So, for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's it's your bodyguard. Without this, your whatever feminine energy you create will be destroyed by the outside because your your fem your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you know. It, you know. Now the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one would this one would teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self awareness, healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly it's it's it, it this will supercharge like like Kyle Ken your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women on power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace. And even the dress code, they, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. 
and how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you can read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um nine at ninety nine dollars. Um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video right there. You'll see it, and you could pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10 day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think that the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel. You see, humans rely on consistency to identify patterns and feel calm and relax. Humans observe nature, um, not just to observe its, its fascinating aspect, but also to predict it and to be able to anticipate the unpredictable in order to give them some sense of comfort. Um, whenever you can anticipate something, you usually have a calmness to you. Whenever, that's why people who play sports, if they practice it long enough, they're able to anticipate moves and gives and, and calms them down and it slows down time. So, so anticipation creates a sense of control for humans. So whenever you are inconsistent, it really leaves people feeling vulnerable. And the reason why is this is because the uncertainty in the in in in, 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 on, in the prehistoric times of humans usually meant death. You did not know what's going to happen next. You did not know the next weather. You did not know what type of animals are here. And so those play when you're in a state of uncertainty, you usually are looking out for threats. And also, kids who get inconsistent parents also f feel a wide range of extreme emotions: extreme happiness, extreme sadness. And so by being inconsistent from time to time, not being able to be anticipated, not being able to predict you every now and then creates this sense of roller coaster. And it it creates, now look, there, there's a sense of open communication that I don't want you to lose with your partners. That's why I'm telling you, I don't want you, I don't want them to be able to anticipate you all the time. Yes, give them, give them a sense of anticipation to make it healthy, but give them some don't put too much because if you act inconsistent too much it actually prevents emo an emotional connection with the person it creates a, that fear will, will, will blunt the communication and the trust that you guys have this is only this inconsistency is there to per periodically break the habit periodically um, um remove boredom and this is more like pruning a tree or pr pruning plants right this is more of maintenance this is not meant to hurt people to manipulate them to make them lose a sense of self to get something out of them is or is it's really more of a gift to them to keep them entertained the next thing is uncertainty right this is why you don't tell people what you want this is why you tell people you want this when in reality you want that this is why um when somebody fucks up you don't tell them they fucked up you just gave you just give them a serious look you make them guess why you're mad you make them guess what they did wrong right you don't give them all the answers not knowing what to expect or how a situation will unfold can trigger a range of emotions from anxiety to apprehension to excitement and curiosity right that's why you don't reveal everything about you right you don't you 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 don't tell people exactly what you want you don't tell people exactly what makes you happy you you let them guess it right you don't tell people um um why all of a sudden you're pulling away right if somebody actually likes you they'll pay attention enough to be able to connect the dots right but before they're able to, to connect the dots they see a, a fog of uncertainty and they have to connect it, right? That uncertainty of not knowing how you feel. That's why I tell you guys, don't be so easy to reveal people how you feel, right? Let them keep them guessing. You know, one day you show them that you really like them and then all of a sudden you disappear, right? One day you give them a gift and then all of a sudden you, 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 you don't text them the next day or the next two days, right? You have to understand a lot of people hear what I'm saying and they moralize it, right? Because oh, most likely you're thinking of someone who's 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 actively manipulating someone and who's actively being sadistic. What I am telling you is 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 people managing. Any boss will tell you that this is very important. 
You don't even when you're happy, you don't have you don't act happy around people. If you're if you're if you're a manager or or in general or a boss, you'll notice that you have to hide certain emotions. You have to hide some feelings, right? And you have to present almost like a cold or serious front. And then when they do something well, then you do show them that happiness. But when then when they fuck up, you show them that coldness, right? And so your front is of seriousness and you only use your reward or your punishment as a as a as a tool that you pick up or put down, right? You don't do that to an extreme with your partners, but you kind of apply that principle to a certain degree. You have to. You can't be freaking freaking PBS Teletubbies happy energy all the time. No, motherfucker, that's creepy. Even Teletubbies are creepy. So uncertainty. Never fully express to people how they feel, how you feel. Send them mixed signals from time to time. Make, like, like scramble your patterns. Don't make them fully be able to anticipate you. Yeah, give them some sense of anticipation, but from time to time, break those expectations right and the reason why you do this is because the next one perceived control and powerlessness a sense of control feeling in control of a situation can ev- can evoke positive emotions like confidence and empowerment right you validate them you let them know you like them conversely a lack of control can lead to feelings of powerlessness frustration fear contributing to emotional highs and low this is why you it's okay to express to people how you feel how much you love, how much you're falling for them, right? So that then you give them that sense of control. It is healthy. But then from time to time, you take that control from them. All of a sudden, they had you, you were, they were able to see you every day. All of a sudden, now you're busy. You, they, they thought that you really liked them. All of a sudden, you're, all of a sudden, you're, you're not available. The sense of I have them and then the sense of what the fuck's happening? Are they losing interest? is what i'm talking about and i don't want you to give them that feeling through just being obvious right saying hey i don't like you no you don't do that you you make it subtle you used to text them instantly now you take 10 to 20 minutes consistently you used to stay over now you don't now you gotta go home you you used to see them on your lunch break now you can't because you have extra work these are not obvious things these are just subtle things and these subtle things are going to be perceived as little energy shifts they're going to notice your energy is not right for example it's like being blue and now rather than being blue now you're dark dark blue right it's like it's the same color but just a different shade it's like they can sense there's like a where before you had this amount of distance now there's this amount of distance it's not perceivable but if you look close enough you can tell that there's a distance that's what i'm talking about the hint of doubt the sense that I'm losing control over this person, the sense that this person, all of a sudden, I want to go here, and now they want to go in this direction. You know when someone's losing interest slowly, and but they're not trying to show it. You perceive it as an energy shift. Maybe they don't smile at you as much. Maybe they don't hug you hard enough. Those little subtle things are not perceivable to the naked eye, but it's perceivable to the receiver. And these things make people have a sense of losing control. So what do they do? They try to gain some control through trying to get some positive reactions out of you. So that means they start being romantic. All of a sudden, they start paying more attention. All of a sudden, they start doing things to try to create a positive reaction out of you so that they can have some sense of control. The next one is surprise and unexpected events. Surprise elements. Unexpected twists, surprises, and sudden changes can trigger a roller coaster of emotions as individuals react to no information or outcomes that, in, that deviate from their expectations. This can be done with gifts and then coldness, right? You surprise them out of nowhere with a romantic evening, right? You give them a romantic night that's out of nowhere and without any reason. And then suddenly you want to take a break. Then suddenly one day you give them a gift. Or, or, or maybe all of a sudden you saw them every day. Then now all of a sudden this one week you can't. You're busy with work. Or are you really busy? And then at the end of that week when they're, when they're saying what's going on. Are they losing interest? Why all of a sudden they're busy and they were busy all the, the whole month. Are they really busy? And then at their lowest moment 
Then you surprise them with a night out. You, su you surprise them with a gift. You surprise them with something considerate and thoughtful. Removing all of their doubts. Now they feel validation. This is fun. This is something that most people never get to experience. I'm trying to reframe the, how this looks in people's eye. It, 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 from somebody who's a, who's, a, who's a cynic, they see this as manipulation. As somebody who is a romantic, you see this as giving them an experience, like a movie, like a work of art. You, the experience with you becomes a work of art. As long as you have good intentions and, 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 and love, this can be done with grace and beauty. Right. And the reason why surprise works so well is because surprise allows people to lower their guards. Um, all of a sudden they expected this and now this, uh, and now you're acting like this. Right. All of a sudden they thought they were losing you. And now all of a sudden you're giving them a handwritten letter explaining to them how much you appreciate them. You bring them from the from the dark um, 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 separate, from the dark places of self-esteem and you bring them up. And these are things that people value. These are things that people appreciate and they gravitate towards you as a result. The next thing is social comparison. Comparing oneself to others or seeking validation from peers can evoke fluctuating emotions as individuals navigate feelings of acceptance, rejection, admiration, or envy. This can be done with triangulation, right? Where, you know, this is the toxic one, right? Um, I, I don't recommend this, but but when you're not when you're dating someone and you're telling them you're dating other people and seeing which one is best for you right you never fully commit and this triangulation creates competition it creates a, a up and down emotion or even how talking about how you loved your ex and now you have a hard time loving anyone this will make them say why did they not love me back why did they love their ex why are they having such a hard time connecting with people they connected with somebody else. Why can't they do that with me? People really think that way. I thought that way. This happened to me before, to be honest with you. Um, and it, it definitely created that sense of like, you just fluctuate. You're like, am I good enough? Am I comparing? Like you just start comparing yourself. And it's not healthy, to be honest with you. But this is one way to create that roller coaster of emotion through creating that jealousy, creating that, that competition between somebody else. The next one is cognitive distortion, which is pretty much the halo effect. Biases in thinking such as catastrophizing, black and white thinking, overgeneralizing can amplify emotions and contribute to a roller coaster of extreme highs and lows. So this can be done by giving an impression of something about you and then giving them the opposite. Like maybe you gave them the impression that you are a super sweet person. And then all of a sudden when something, when they fuck up, rightfully so, then you show them the harshness. Maybe you, maybe you give them the impression that you're always going to be there. And then they fuck up and now you're threatened to leave and they can sense that it's not an empty threat, right? Maybe you give them the impression that you're always lovey-dovey, always hugging them, always kissing them. And then next time you hang out, you, you want to be physically distant, right? They see you one way, they create a cognitive perception of how you are, and then you break that perception by acting the complete opposite. Right. You give them the impression that you are nice and sweet, but then you give them the impression a few um, um, a, uh, after a few, uh, after a short time that there's a certain harshness to you. You might think it might turn them off, but because it goes against what they expected from you, it gives them a roller coaster of emotion in the sense that they find you even more fascinating. Maybe they only see your light side and then one day they see your dark side, your shadow side. It makes you more fascinating. It creates a friction. And so going against what people expect from you, they see you and then you act the complete opposite is attractive. For example, it's like a girl who looks like a nice girl, who looks like a nice little Catholic school girl, but she's a freak in the bedroom, right? Those friction. That's why when women dress like the Catholic school girl with the sexy outfit, it goes against expectation. You got this holy fucking uniform but it's sexy, right? It's the forbidden. It's the friction between the taboo and the acceptable, the dark and the light, right? The 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 holy and the and 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 the demonic, right? Those things, when you give them the impression of one thing and then you present the opposite, it creates a a a feeling inside that creates fascination. 
The next thing is having tough conversations or, or physical arousal. Um, one of the things like heightened physiological responses such as increased heart rate, adrenaline, and sweating can intensify emotion, contributing to the roller coaster of emotions people feel as a reaction to a physical arousal. So one of the things that creates it is, that, is actually having uncomfortable conversations. Having conversations about, about where this relationship is going. Honestly, people might think it's needy. It's actually, if you have a conversation about the nature of your relationship and you do this with the willingness to walk away, people, this tough conversations creates a roller coaster of emotion because it's uncomfortable. It increases your heart rate. It increases, you get sweaty, you get uncomfortable. Like honestly, tough conversations create an, an, a physical arousal that does give people the feeling of uncomfortableness you're talking about it, you're talking about it, you're expressing things that are uncomfortable, and then you resolve it, and then the high-end physiological response gets lowered. And what people tend to notice is that after uncomfortable conversations that's successful, people actually feel closer to the person. And that's because they they went they went high, high, low, low, high, high in the conversation. And that's why it's important to have those things. That's why couples that are able to have uncomfortable conversations are closer. Because in those moments, they experience highs and lows, right? It's uncomfortable. But then once they finally talk about it, then they feel a, a, a release of emotion, a release of tension. And these are ways to give a man a roller coaster of emotion. Another thing, like I said, is the, the most important one, honestly, is the first one, right? anticipation uncertainty and having them lose a sense of control like that's why pulling away breaking up with them leaving them when they're when they're actually fucking up leaving them and making them come back to you and prove to you why you should take them back and then waiting for your response right saying you're gonna think about it saying i'm gonna think about it and let you know about whether or not i should take you back and even though you you were gonna take him back instantly even though you, like this, this happened with a girl where she was like, you know, are you, you want to try to work it out? I could have said, yeah, but I was like, I'm going to think about it, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was during the pandemic, that pandemic, that was really bad. Um, and the reason why is it was because, like I said, she, she was always late to date, right? And, and, and I told her, look, man, I'm going to have to think about this. I'm going to have to think about this because I don't like the way you, you just, you're always late to responding to my text messages. You're always late to dates. I'm going to think about this. And the way, and what happened with that girl is that I ended up leaving her because I'm like, look, man, you're going to repeat this shit again. You can't help yourself. But if I would have said yes instantly, like, even though I did say no, but if I did say yes at the end of it, the waiting, the anticipation does create that roller coaster of emotion. That's how Houdini did his tricks. Houdini could have done most of his tricks instantly, like in one minute. But he would let the audience like wait and make him and make him look like he's struggling because he understood that waiting, anticipating that response, anticipating the outcome, and seeing him struggle creates a roller coaster of emotions. It just does, right? Now the next thing that creates it is risk. Okay, the risk of losing the person when they know that you're willing to walk away, when they know that if they fuck up, you're willing to walk away. Any day could be the day when you leave. Any day could be that. It could be that day. Let not let him, not giving people the impression that you that your love is unconditional. Making sure that you don't give that impression creates every moment could be the day when you leave, and that gives you. Power. Now, don't do this just to be evil. You know what I'm saying? This, what I'm telling you, is how you keep relationships spicy. Honestly, this is how you do it. Um, if you don't keep pe give people a roller coaster of emotions, then they don't like you enough to have those ups and downs. If you cannot give someone a roller coaster of emotions, it just means they don't like you enough. It's, it's just that simple, right? Because when you like someone, there's a lot of emotions, like always bubbling. And any action you take, it's almost like you go to extreme ends. Like extreme emotions causes this. Right, any you you freaking you look you freaking look at them wrong, and they think you're leaving them, <laughs> right? But when there's no extreme emotions, they don't pay attention to those details. So usually, if you leave, this happens. If you if you stay, this happens. But when they really like you, if you leave, this happens. If you stay, this happens. It takes more of a swing, right? And the and the more they like you, the further the swing. That's why 
it's if you can't create a roller coaster of emotions, love. They just don't like you enough. They're not that captivated by you. So you have to give them a roller coaster of emotions or else they don't like you. Or you're just being selfish and you don't want to apply these strategies because they look selfish. It's let go of your of your morality. Okay? People need this. This is important. In order to get somebody to respect you, they have to sense that that there's a, there's a lot of love in you, but also there's a, there's a there's a willingness to be harsh. And too many people try to hide the harshness part because they they feel uncomfortable. Stop being selfish. Give them that experience. They want an experience. They want to feel afraid. They want to feel anxiety. They want to feel anticipation, right? They they want to feel that. Like it's exciting when I'm going on a date with someone and and I'm like a little nervous. It's exciting. And too many people are so self-consumed with wanting to be moral, nice, this or that, that they're previewing them from having a, a, an extremely pleasurable emotional experience. People like that. And if you give them a roller coaster of emotion, they're, they're always going to come back to you. I'm Trust me, man. Trust me. Anyways, I hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to mindfulattraction.org to work with Father Alex. And I'll see you guys later. Boom, boom.